All right, today I'm going to talk about mic concealment for theatrical performances. Uh, I've seen performances before where mics are uh, generally taped to the side of the face, or it's like an ear set that comes down to the side like that. And what I've done, I did a little bit of research and noticed that Broadway uses what's called a toupee clip, but I never saw any videos on how to do it. So, uh, toupee clip are these little guys right here. You can get about a few hundred of them for just a couple bucks on eBay. Uh, they just attach to the inside of a toupee, clip on your hair, and then snap like that. Uh, so this type of thing, what I've done, I've taken this and uh, wired elastic into that. And with that elastic then, you can take a microphone like this and wrap it around that elastic two times. And that stays with the mic just like that. So I've got an actor right here. And uh, you generally want to make sure that if somebody has to have hairsprayed or gelled hair, you want to have them come to you right after they get this done because you want to be able to do it with the hair wet and obviously not dried up and starting to harden. So what I'll do with, with a comb like this, with the, the long pick, because it's very important to have something like this, uh, I'll find a part and slide back right in the middle, bring the hair out, separate it from the rest of the hair, and then peel a portion of it back so you've got the, uh, the part exposed. So now this hair clip, you can slide it into the exposed hair, clip it down, and it stays. So just continue on back through the hair. I generally put three of these on a hair clip, or on a uh, microphone. top portion then you can take the tooth part of the comb and comb it right back over the mic. Right, go and stand up. So an actor like this, this is one of the places where I've run into problems before. An actor like this, you can see how much short hair is down here in the bottom. It makes it kind of difficult to conceal that wire back here in the back. So uh, generally, just for any type of mic, I'll use this Next Care 3M tape. Actors hate it, I love it. It leaves all kinds of residue, but it doesn't go anywhere throughout a show. So, usually, you'd have an actor tilt his head down so that when they do have to lean down in the show, it doesn't cause any strain on the microphone itself. The problem with that is, go ahead and put your head up. When you do that, this cable, turn your head to the side, this cable will stick out and you can see that from the stage. So what I've done, go ahead and put your head back down. One thing you can do is take that cable and give it a little bit of a twist before you tape it, I'm gonna put your head back up. And then when you twist, that stays a lot closer with the head. And you don't have any issues with that. So when I come back, I'm gonna show you a couple other things for coloring the mic to match actor's hair or skin tone. Uh, and I'll be back shortly. Y'all yeah, get ready to put y'all up on something, man. Like yo.
All right, we're back. So here's the Countryman B3. Uh, this is we have 12 of these at our theater. They are great. Uh, the B6 would be more ideal. It's a much uh, easier uh, to be concealed microphone, but these work just perfectly fine. Um, now we just got 12 of these in beige. Now obviously you may occasionally have actors with darker skin, lighter skin, um, uh, that the, the, the beige just does not work properly for. So in that case, um, I have found these uh, Copic mar markers. Uh, these things are actually specifically for uh, sketching and artwork and that type of thing. Found these on eBay as well. You can get them on Amazon, get them anywhere. They come in many, 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 many different colors. Uh, just keep in mind, this is a fairly permanent solution. So if you're coloring these beige microphones, uh, just be ready to accept that the microphones will generally be permanently colored in whatever color you put on it. Uh, you can use something like Goo Gone or Nail Polish Remover, and that can make it fade if you need it to fade, which ours have over time. Uh, but as a perfect example, this is one that I used for uh, darker skinned female and uh, you can color the ends of this as well, the tip of it. Just make sure you don't get the screen. Uh, you just want to very carefully go around that. Uh, obviously that can cause issues for your microphone itself. Um, these clips, like I mentioned in the last video, you can get these in many different colors. I picked up black, silver, brown, and beige. Uh, now occasionally you might have somebody with uh, like a dirty, dirty blonde type of hair color and you can use those Copic markers to uh, paint the beige hair clip as well. Uh, what I'll generally do is, uh, once the microphone is on the actor's head, uh, just run the, mic the, uh, the the marker through the hair all the way down to the neckline. Um, there have also been instances where I've left the tip of it beige so I can bring it a little bit farther down on the head so it doesn't conflict with any, uh, any viewing or makeup or anything like that so it's uh, not well seen from the audience. One thing you want to make sure you definitely do not do, I've had an actor or a uh, sound guy in the past that came in here temporarily use a Sharpie. And a Sharpie can give you many issues like this one right here. It eventually turns purple once it uh, sweats off or if you try to clean it off. So whatever you do, absolutely do not use Sharpie. It looks terrible, nothing you can do about it unless you buy a new cap or even an entirely new mic. Uh, in addition to that, one last note, these caps that come with the, uh, the Countryman mics they're fairly expensive and they like to fall off. Using these hair clips when uh, an actor at the end of the evening pulls them out of their hair, they're not very careful and these mics can be lost. We've actually implemented a, uh, a $10 deposit at our theater for each actor. Each actor at the beginning of the show gives us a $10 deposit. If they come back with everything intact and the cap's still on the mic, then they get that $10 back. Uh, but this just covers your butt because it's kind of expensive for those caps and once you start getting through the, uh, the flat frequency, uh, response caps start getting into the uh, the high boost and that can wreak havoc on a uh, cinder block wall theater like ours it's very difficult to control feedback in that case um, if you have any questions shoot me an email at the contact below and uh, thanks for